Good evening. You are watching the rest of the story. That sound kind of... Let me say that again. Welcome back. You're watching the rest of the story. Yeah, that one sounded better. All right. Well, I'm out. I'm down at my place. And I'm down in the grass waterways that I cut out... Oh gosh, what was that? About three weeks ago already? Might have been a little bit longer. The stuff is coming back really nice. Uh, I'm not. I, was, I, I wasn't planning on making a second cutting off of this. This was supposed to be just a one and done thing. Um, August has been a wet month. And yes, these are Brittany's dogs. They're, they're, they're not mine. I, I do not claim these dogs whatsoever. Actually, I got them by marriage. Okay, so maybe they're half mine, but I don't exactly claim them all the time. But August has been a really wet month. A um, lot of rain. Like, it's kind of like a copy and paste of, ju of June. June is a typically very wet month, kind of hard to make hay. You know, when we were milking cows and we were chopping, we could get away with cutting it and cutting it one day and chopping it the next day. It worked out really well, but the problem is now that we have to make dry hay in June, um, it gets kind of, you get kind of tight on the amount of time you have to cut, rake, bale. Um, rhino Egg has sent us that tether and all that rhino stuff, which is really great. Um, one of my favorite summertime tools that they sent us. <laughs> summertime tools. Um, seems like we can't use the VT in the summer. Oh, well, I could kind of hard to make hay with a VT though. Get me in the right mood I'd be willing to try. Um, that uh, hay tether, um, as simple and as odd as it sounds, that rhino hay tether is one of my favorite things they sent to us. We've never had a tether in the past. We've never had a need for one. Well, yeah, there's times where we've had a need for one. Um, they're great. They, they let you get the hay the material that you're making to dry down so much more thoroughly um, throughout it a lot more evenly um, that's why I windrow it even this stuff this stuff it was so heavy because this is first crop hay that I made the first of August and it did make some really nice bales I got 33 bales off of oh heck I'm maybe all together I probably cut probably 10 to 12 acres now there's some pasture in the waterways and it's tedious because you go up waterways like that and then you get to a dead corner and you gotta you know maneuver and everything else but i don't know for how how well this is coming back i mean i might not do as a great of a job cutting a second cutting if i get crazy enough to go ahead and do it um, but i might just kind of go in and cherry pick take all the easy cutting because for how much of a time killer it is just to make to go through and cut these waterways out like i did the first time around um it was worth it um to do it again i don't know if i have the patience in me <laughs> not gonna lie um that's just how it is i really wasn't coming out to talk about second cutting hay water hay grass um i really meant to come out and talk about the crops i haven't talked about them too much here lately I haven't been getting carried away going and checking crops this year. Mainly because I don't want to set myself up for disappointment. Last year, the last couple of years, I've been going out and I was always checking, checking the crops, checking the yield. And don't get me wrong, I was usually within five bushels, ten bushels. Um, usually got really close. Um, soybeans, no, I don't, I don't try soybeans. Soybeans, they're, they're the black sheep crop. They. They're impossible to guess what they're doing on yield. They're impossible to figure out how they're growing because they can look terrible. I mean, just downright terrible, like to the point where it's like, you yeah, know, I could probably go through and hit it with a brush cutter and I me mean, not that bad, but you know, I exaggerate for effect. Well, and they get the rain that we had this year in August. Um, we were close. We were... The, when we started to get all this rain here in the past two and a half weeks, uh, yeah, um, the, our soybeans were showing stress. When we were pouring that concrete, uh, we have a couple of spots up at Rockville that we was as we were pouring that concrete, we could see 
um, the stress that the beans were going in, just on the lighter spots um, where we know there are rocks. Um, it's the rain hit probably ideally if it, we, we would have gotten it two days earlier it still saved us um, when we did get it but two days earlier and that would have probably taken a little bit more of the stress off a little bit sooner um, but yes soybeans are going to do well this year my concern is seems how i don't have any storage like i could but i don't um i'm not gonna get into that and um my biggest concern is is that everything that ryan and i sell and about five percent of what my dad will be doing this fall will be sold out of the field and i'm just worried that seems how the river is somewhat backed up barge freight has gone up and um basis has gotten worse um gradually last year i locked in all my basis at least 90 percent of my basis in august um this same time this year compared to last year it's significantly higher than it was last year um i'll keep doing this here um i'm just worried that we're going to send a truck down and it's going to be we'll get one or two loads out a day oh. whoops and well if it happens, we'll deal with it as it happens. I mean, having the foresight of being aware of that may be an issue. It helps helps you with being able to plan harvest and the the way you're going to harvest and everything else. Um, last year, I wasn't really all that crazy about. Well, I wasn't really all that crazy about last year. Just how it planned out. Um, we had a a late start as it was. I mean we it was what third of october before we got going and ideally it's not a hard date um, but ideally like the first week of october um to really get going is what i'd like to see and we did we ran well we run a farm farm and a half out on soybeans um in the, at the end of september but and you can't count I can count on one hand how many times we've harvested in September. And they're saying this year we're earlier, so I, I don't know. This has supposedly been a really good year for the crops. I mean, I'm optimistic. Maybe that plays into part of the reason why I'm not getting carried away going out and walking through the fields and getting excited that, hey, we got 150 bushel yield. No, um, 150 bushel is what we used to get with Pioneer. Sorry for anybody that plants Pioneer or any Pioneer reps. My grandpa planted Pioneer seed for 50 years, 55 years. Um, something that I don't know how many people are really aware of, um, but there are different pricing sheets. Um, the longer that, this, this loyalty thing is really messed up. The longer that you stay with a certain brand, um, the more likely they are to really hit you hard on their pricing. And we found out that we were paying uh, one of the highest tiers of pricing on our soybean, or not our soybean seed, our corn seed, um, compared to if we would have went and started planting DeKalb. Well, our Pioneer seed was running, well, to be honest, 180 170 180 was expected when we were doing that well then came along the year where we found out DeKalb was about 80 bucks less than the pioneer seed that we could have planted or could have bought were quoted so it didn't take a whole lot of intense thinking to decide that we're getting away from pioneer um, the biggest issue we had was grandpa grandpa was yeah set in his ways all the way up to the day he died um grandpa did not like change um grandpa was probably your stereotypical stubborn old man i mean when we all get to that age in our lives i imagine we all will have those traits but um 
he it took him about I don't know how long did it really take to convince him not too overly much because we <laughs> put the price sheets down in front of him and he did kind of him and haw a little bit but we went we paid less for going to Kelb. we planted to Kelb, different genetics or whatever else you want to say we gained about 30 to 50 bushel to the acre just by switching um, varieties now that results are probably not typical for everybody but for us that was huge uh, we went from 170 to 180 to 190 to seeing 200 and after tweaking the fertilizer program and adjusting things a little bit more 190 to 200 was pretty common only problem is is that I know 200 bushels is amazing right I mean probably being called an ass by somebody right now but um the problem is is that it does cost more to get those better yields you can't just be good at growing a crop you gotta be good at marketing you gotta be a professional when you're a farmer you gotta be a professional at so many things and you don't necessarily learn all those things at school i went to a school for mechanics um i like the schooling i did learn a fair amount that i brought back home to the farm um, if I could go back and do it again, I probably would have still done mechanics, but probably on more of like a minor degree. Um, I've learned a lot more just at the farm, hands-on, than I did really at my internship. If I could go back and do like ag business or agronomy or, um, yeah, some kind of marketing class, I would. Um, in the last two or three years, I've learned... A significant amount and being able to market your crops marketing forward granted there is risk that comes with it you know like being able to produce what you're selling so there is a limit to how much of your percentage of your crop you're willing to sell but insurance does help play into that as far as what you can be comfortable selling um, <laughs> the, you guys this isn't your grand your grandpa's your grandparents um, family farm anymore things are run so much differently than what they were uh, when my grandpa started back in the 50s and the 60s things were a lot simpler we've come a long way with the introduction of technology and these higher yields are expected they're expected and they're required it's you really can't afford to, to trip up anymore I mean if you fall you're gonna fall a fairly long ways but this is what we're currently looking at for our crop um, not everything has two ears on it and it's not very common ever to see two ears on one plant normally many people were saying this a while back that this is a sucker ear okay this is a sucker ear that's just gonna you know take away from the yield on the primary ear well i gotta tell you guys the primary ear i was always told approximately the length of your hand as far as what you're aiming for on a, a typical ear these ears are fairly healthy they are 14 which i don't like to see um a lot of them i've been seeing are about 16 around uh 28 to 35 long i don't like seeing too large of a, a large of an ear myself because i do worry about um eardrop and i think that was what last year out in nebraska kansas where there were pictures on line where it was just the entire fields where the ears were just laying on the ground i mean was a high wind or something came through and that particular variety there was guys that have never grazed their let cattle graze their fields ever and they were doing it just to try to limit the amount of loss they were seeing but i'm not doing this to brag i mean these outside rows are going to get more sunlight they're going to produce a little bit more you get inside you don't see as many of the double ears you see a lot more of the single ears i just think it's kind of neat to see in these outside rows row or two i mean you can see in through there 
one ear, one ear, two ears, ear and a half, no ear. So corn is variable. The corn is there. The crop is made. I mean, it's starting to dent. Um, harvest is probably going to be about first bucket. Uh, uh, around the 1st of October, as far as corn goes, we're going to try to let it get dry enough. Typically 22 to 23 when we start harvesting. Um, you get too much drier, you get down to the 17% and you start seeing a lot more of the, the head shell. We do have those 360 degree chain rolls and the, the chain saver brushes. Um, look, definitely looking forward to running those this year. Last year we had some weed control issues. We only did a one spray program. Uh, no, that's probably not going to happen anymore. We went from a two spray to a one spray because the two spray uh, was off. Oh, somebody's upset. Um, the two spray was costing a little too much for what we were getting out of it. Um, where we're at right now, we went to a one spray last year because that's what they were originally doing from the previous place we were at. Um, last year it fell flat in its face. Um, we still had an awesome crop. But this year, with spraying the beans that are using the varieties that we have, going with the two-pass program, cultivating what I cultivated, you know, um, plus the soybeans look awesome this year. So the two-pass program definitely worked better for us this year. Um, you do some screaming at some people. Or, that makes it sound mean. We didn't scream at anybody. We just talk sternly at them that sounds better um people generally don't seem to like andrew around here we like the guy i'm just saying we definitely know he's a salesman but in the end we're the ones that make the decisions on what we buy what we pay for and he has actually talked us out of buying things there's things where i've considered trying or asking him about and he's actually talked us out of it um, to avoid spending money that wouldn't benefit us uh, we've talked about doing fungicide we are doing trials we did trials last year it was a wash that's why we had that yield monitor on the combine that fungicide pass we made that way on this farm um, they made it at an angle to the corn rows. So the corn yield monitor is going to be able to see that pretty distinctively if that actually gives us a yield boost or a yield loss. Um, I know I'm rambling, but um, things are definitely different than what they were when Grandpa was here. <laughs> uh, we didn't do as much of this trial and run stuff and Tweaking this and changing that, um, going back to cultivating was a pretty big deal when Grandpa was here. Um, Grandpa wasn't against it. I mean, he he liked it. He liked cultivating. It's just that he said that everybody else in the area quit doing it, and they were still raising a decent crop. Um, the first year that I cultivated, it was a learning curve. I mean, it's pretty straightforward, but just that chest wrenching feeling you're getting when um, you're going through and running down corn seems how it's already up and going um, but the yield the yields we were seeing the cl the corn how it would jump up after you cultivated it it's it's worth it so well it is a really beautiful night out again the moon is out the sun is setting Fall is here, unfortunately. I'm a, I'm a summer guy. I just, I'm not big on the cold weather and honestly fall is really hectic. So, well, I gotta head home. Doesn't look too bad. But you know my problem is, is it could always be better. We could get 300 bushel to the acre and I'll complain that it should be 310. Never settle. All right, that's enough for tonight. Hope you guys enjoyed watching.
I'm sorry I talked too long for those of you that probably already left. Until next time, take care, take it easy, keep in touch. I'll talk to you guys later.